Now, I'll tell you flat out, I've never been a fan of Paige. I think, frankly, that she's an overrated indie darling. Imagine that. I'm not, I've never gotten what was the big deal about her. Even going back to the NXT days where she was the anti-diva, yet she's did so many damn things down to the random getting in the ring scream that screamed typical WWE diva. I never thought she was that good at carrying a story. Never really thought that, frankly, she was all that great in the ring. Well, certainly don't think she was great on the microphone and particularly did not have a particularly appealing look to me. Now, some of that is the fault of her. Some of that is the fault of the company, what have you. But you will never ever count me in the being a fan of Paige category. With that said, I am also not a fan of the current way the WWE uh, has structured their drug testing, their wellness testing program. Because here's my thing. We could suspend somebody like, let's say, a Roman Reigns for testing positive for Adderall for 30 days. We suspend him 30 days for Adderall. But you have Brock Lesnar fail multiple doping tests before UFC 200, testing positive for estrogen blockers, knowing damn good and well what that's being used for. And the WWE does nothing. In fact, issues a statement as to why they won't suspend him, basically stating that since Brock Lesnar is not a full-time WWE employee, he is not beholden to the WWE's wellness program. Which is the biggest load of shit that I've ever heard, because if we want to get really technical about it, everybody, up to and including Paige, would not be WWE employees per se, because they would be classified as independent contractors. Now, surely... It doesn't really work like that in terms of them being independent contractors because they really can't go wherever the hell they want as long as it doesn't conflict with WWE because the WWE structures it in a way to where they don't have to provide the wrestler's health insurance and they don't have to pay their half as a company of the social security tax for said wrestlers. Uh, but they basically dictate all the terms of where these guys can work and when and for who. So it's a system reeked with hypocrisy, but if we're going to go off of that nobody's a full-time employer, Brock Lesnar isn't, then nobody is because they're all independent contractors. They're, by definition, almost self-employed, which means they would be employed by themselves, and therefore, as a result, if we apply that Brock Lesnar logic to everybody else, up to and including Paige, nobody should be held accountable to the wellness policy then. I'm just saying. Now, with that said, the policy is what the policy is, and the drug testing is what the drug testing is. And you have to know that the WWE is going to randomly test you for this stuff. Now, it's one thing if you get one boo-boo. And Paige most certainly is not the first individual, nor will she be the last individual, to get a naughty and get a boo-boo in the drug testing uh, program. You know, you, you drop hot, you do your 30-day suspension, and you move on. You know, Roman's doing it. You know, Randall's had two of them in the past. There's loads of people that have dropped, <laughs> dropped hot for the drug test. So that in and of itself is not a huge deal. However, to me, what is a huge deal, and speaks to a lot of things about the individual, is the fact that shortly after getting a first positive test, Paige has now gotten a second positive test, committed a second violation of a wellness policy, and now has been suspended an additional 60 days. You know, some of you can buy into the prescription drug crap some of you can buy into this or you can buy into that. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is, is this is all on page and this is her fault. And how fucking stupid can you be? Look, oftentimes in the corporate world, it's not the last offense that gets you. It's all the other ones that lead up to that point in time that end up getting you shown the door. And in this particular case, Paige is one step away from being set off from the company and being fired. She is. You know, three strikes and you're out type of deal. So if she gets another one, it's not necessarily going to be the third one that got her in the trouble. It's the fact that she tested positive and then did it again shortly after. That would have set the table for what's to happen. And what I can't understand for the life of me is how a person like Paige could put themselves in a position like this unless they really didn't fucking care. And you know, frankly, in recent months, you know, there's been things that Paige has done that just really rubbed me the wrong way. 
just kind of the way she acts and conducts herself. Like even when she was doing the uh, tough enough crap and she was sitting there shitting on people like she had ever really truly fucking accomplished anything. It's different if a Hulk Hogan is shitting on you. It is different if a Daniel Bryan is shitting on you or a Chris Jericho is shitting on you. Because those are all guys that have main evented WrestleMania. Those are guys that have made big time money. Those are guys that have become stars. But who the fuck is a page to sit there and shit on anybody for any goddamn thing? And it's just unbelievable. But I, I really start to wonder, you know, especially now that she's dating Alberto Del Rio and he's gone from the company again, whether she truly gives a fuck or not. And my thing is, is if she truly doesn't give a fuck, then why is she there? And why does she choose to be there? Because clearly, if you put yourself in a position where in a short period of time, you test positive not once but twice under the WWE's wellness program, that clearly indicates you don't care that much about your job. And if you don't care, why show up? And if you don't care, why be there? And furthermore, from the WWE standpoint, you've released people for a lot worse than this. Although, again, I will want to point out one thing that's hypocritical about this or just ridiculous about all of this is Paige had to test positive twice in order to get a 60-day suspension where Titus O'Neil grabbed the white mass's arm and he got 60 days. I just want to think about that for a second, how fucking ridiculous that is. And now when you look at this type of shit, people want to talk about that being a racial thing. I didn't fully think it was back then, maybe elements of it, but goddamn, son, how else do you justify this? Within a short period of time, you've tested twice. Twice you've tested positive. And my thing is, at this point in time, the WWE should just say enough is enough. Clearly, you don't respect the company. Clearly, you don't respect yourself. Clearly, you don't respect the other people in the company. Clearly, you don't respect any fucking thing, and you don't care. And if you don't respect anybody, and you don't care, then you don't need to be here. Again, people have gotten released for far less than this, and for more egregious things than this. They just don't need her. I mean, what the fuck does a page bring to the table, honestly, at this point, that a Charlotte, a Sasha, a Becky Lynch, a Bailey, or any other number of women in the company, both at the main roster level and NXT, what, what does she bring that all those ladies can't bring? The answer is nothing. And did anybody find it ironic that the women's wrestling in WWE got just a teensy-weensy bit better once Paige was primarily out of the fucking picture? If the bitch don't care, then oblige her. If the bitch don't want to be there, then please her. Send her ass packing. I have no desire to ever see Paige on a WWE program in a WWE ring, and neither should any of you. For all of you that have sat there and tried to artificially prop her up and support her, frankly, this is how she repays you. You guys want to see her, and she doesn't care enough to not drop fucking hot on her drug tests. Fuck her. And fuck people that will still try to defend and support her too. There are plenty of other talents, both male and female in that company, that actually care. They care about themselves, they care about the company, they care about the product, they care about others. And they respect themselves and respect the company and respect the product and respect others and respect the fans. And would never dream of putting themselves and the company in this type of position where they would test positive twice in a very short period of time. Those are the type of people that are worth supporting. Those are the type of people worth rooting for. Those are the type of people that deserve to have a spot in the WWE. And Paige checks off none of the boxes on that. And clearly to me, doesn't care if she's there or not. So the WWE should do everybody involved a favor and oblige her and give her what she wants. Give her more free time with ADR. Give her whatever the hell she wants. Just get her the fuck out of the company. Maybe she can go back to England and wrestle for her fucking family. Who knows? Who fucking cares? And frankly, when it comes to the product in recent months, when it comes to Paige, and you're talking about the women's wrestling, nobody has fucking cared. It's doing fine without her, and it's not going to get any better with her. So now you're just basically paying somebody to sit on the fucking sidelines that doesn't want to be there. That makes no sense. Paige should sit there and be woman enough to admit that she doesn't want it right now and doesn't want to be there and wants to do other things and ask for her release and get her release and be a grown-ass woman about it. 
But of course, asking Paige to be a grown-ass woman about anything seems to be an incredible stretch. She has no business in that company anymore. Send her ass packing, please, WWE. She deserves to be fired. Clearly, she wants to be fired. And frankly, I don't know that anybody will fucking miss her if she is fired.